Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here with another video and this one is focused on the different types of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency wallets. So this is going to be kind of an overview video of the different types of wallets that you can get. I will give you some quick examples of them and a few security tips on them as well. I will do other videos then digging deeper into how to use some of the individual wallets. So if this is my first video, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and hit the bell icon to always get some updates. Also do me a favor, if you get some value from this video, please give it a like as well. There will be a blog post put together in the next few days. It will be linked down below when it's ready and it will be more of an in-depth step-by-step going through these wallets. So within Bitcoin wallets, there are many different types and well, there's many different forms that they come in and then there's a lot of different types for each of them forms. So first up, you could have a desktop wallet with a desktop wallet that is stored on one machine, so on your laptop or your desktop or wherever it is, and it can only be accessed from that machine. So that is both good and bad. It is good that it's more secure, and it is a bit restrictive then in that you cannot access it from your phone or if you are on another machine. So one of the types of them is Exodus. I will show you that in a minute because it is one that I use. Then you have your online, your web wallets, cloud wallets, whatever you want to call them. Two of the most popular here are Coinbase and blockchain.info. Coinbase is one that you will hear a lot of people talking about to use as your beginner wallet. It's a very good wallet to get started with. It's not one that I use personally on a day-to-day -day basis, but when you, are getting, when you are starting out, it is a fairly simple wallet to use. You can sign up, register, you can buy your Bitcoin through the, through the wallet. So it's a good way to get an introduction to Bitcoin and uh, actually buying and selling Bitcoin. Then blockchain is another good one that I do actually still use and find fairly good. Uh, with the online wallets, you can access them from any anywhere you have access to a browser, you can access them. As well as that, you can see under mobile. So there's a mobile app for Coinbase and blockchain. So you can install the app on your phone as well and have access to them from there. Other mobile wallets are Mycelium, Mycelium, I think I'm saying that right, and Jax. Jax also has a desktop version as well. Personally, I don't use either of these two, but they are very popular. They are stored on your phone. And just to say, any of these wallets, some people think that the actual currency then is stored on their phone. What these wallets are is these wallets hold the keys to unlock them coins on the blockchain. So everything is stored in the blockchain, but any of these wallets are your way to unlock your coins on the blockchain. So the coins aren't actually stored within the wallet. The wallets hold the keys that let you access them coins. Then you have your hardware wallets, which are the most secure type of wallets. You have your ledger and your trezor. And they are hardware wallets because you actually have a physical device like this. This is a ledger here. And then this is your Trezor here as well. So I will show you them on the website and I will explain a little bit more about them. But basically with a hardware wallet, you have to have the physical device plugged into your machine to actually access the coins. So they are the most secure of all. And anything, any bigger amounts of coins, then I would suggest that you invest in a hardware wallet and store them on the hardware wallet then. Then you have a paper wallet. So a paper wallet is basically where you print out a sheet of paper with your public and private keys on it. I'll show you an example of that, but it's just a little piece of paper where you can carry it around and you can actually have, that is your access to your coins. It's not one that I really use unless I have to with some new currencies that come out. They only have a paper wallet in the beginning, so I will use it then, but as soon as I can, I will get them transferred over to, to another system. And actually, just to mention under online and cloud wallets, one of the most popular ones for Ethereum is My Ether, My Ether Wallet, and I've done a full video on that about a week ago now. I will put a link to that one down below. Talks all about my Ether wallet, ERC20 wallets, tokens, everything like that. So that is another topic, but I will put the link to that video down below. So just on security then, always back up your wallet. So no matter what kind of wallet you're using, make sure you store the seed keyword phrase because if you need to restore your wallet somewhere else, that will be something that you need. So back up 
Some of the wallets let you back up to an email address that you can send all the information there. Some of them where it has to be the seed word, but make sure that you always back up your wallets because if, so, if you're using a desktop wallet and something happens your machine, then everything could be gone. Unless you have the seed words, you can then just restore it onto another machine. The same with your mobile wallet. If you lose your mobile and you haven't backed up everything, then it's all gone. So security wise, back up everything. Extra and when you back up them seed keyword phrases and everything like that, make sure you keep them in a safe place. So if, because if anyone else gets them or gets your private keys, then they can access your account as well. On extra security, a lot of wallets will allow you to add 2FA, which is Google Authenticator. Make sure you add that anywhere that is possible to add it. You can also set up notifications on emails where you get an email that you have to approve any login. You can set up MSN as well, which is just text messages. But 2FA will be the most important for me. And then you can set up the other ones as extra precautions if you want. So that is the overview. I'll show you Exodus first. So this is the desktop wallet that I talked about. This is Exodus. It is the one of the most popular and the one that I generally use. I only have a small amount in it at the minute. And as you can see from these transactions, I haven't been using it in the last week. And that is due to one of the limitations of it in that it can only be accessed from the machine I am on at the minute. So I've been using one of my online wallets for the last few days. But in general, I use Exodus as my day-to-day -day wallet. It's fairly simple. You come in, send whatever address, send the amount you want. The same when you go into receive, you get your receiving address that you give to anyone. You can store multiple currencies. You can see I've got Ethereum here, Bitcoin, Civic, EOS. And if I come into settings, you can see there are multiple different currencies that you can store on here as well. So that's Exodus. What was next? That was the desktop. So the cloud wallets then, if we look at Coinbase, so this is my own Coinbase account here. It's not one that I use regularly now, but it is a good introduction wallet. So I put links to all of these different wallets and information, both in the description and in the blog post when I get that up. So with Coinbase, you have Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Whoa, there's a lot of talking. So. It's simple, you can come in, you can buy, sell, you can connect up your credit card or your bank account and you get weekly limits depending on how much verification you've done and also your track record of buying coins from them. So you can see I have my Visa card linked up. It's not one that I have used lately to buy, but it is possible I could buy $1,000 there if I wanted to now. Bitcoin Cash is unavailable. You can buy Ethereum or Litecoin as well. You can also sell. So you can sell your Bitcoin back to, or well, you can sell any of them, can't? Yeah, so you can sell Bitcoin Cash either, or Ethereum, you can sell them back and you can pull out the USD or the Euro. You can see mine's coming up in Euro because I'm in Ireland and that's the currency I've set, but you can set USD as well. That is Coinbase. The other one then is blockchain.info. This is one that I like. This is a dummy account just that I've set up for this video. You have your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and it works the exact same way. Look, you have your send, send whatever you want. Again, we can do different tutorial videos on these. Receive, again, in your settings, you can set up your 2FA, you can set up your emails, everything like that. Jax is another one that I mentioned. There is the website, jax.io. It's not one that I use, but it is another very popular wallet. The hardware wallets then, as I mentioned, the Ledger, which is this one here. Ledger, you have two types. You have the Ledger Nano S and you have the Ledger Blue. The Ledger Blue is more expensive, but you can store an awful lot more on it. I don't actually own the Ledger Blue. And again, I will do an in-depth video on the Ledger Nano S and the Trezor showing you how to use them, why I use them. But basically why I use them is for more security and any Bitcoin or even any other currencies that you're not trading day to day, it is a good idea to get them out onto a hardware wallet or you'll hear them known as cold storage. There is the Trezor as well. I'll put links to both them sites down below as well. Last one was a paper wallet. So a paper wallet is basically where you print out 
This is Electronium. Some people will be familiar with it, some won't. It's, uh, it has been a very popular currency over the last few weeks. I don't know when you're gonna see this video. Maybe Electronium will be gone by then, who knows. So you have your private keys, your public key. Well, it's not gonna be gone. I think it's around for the long term. But most paper wallets are the same. You have your public address, you have your private address, and this is what is used to interact with the blockchain. These are the, the keys that are needed to unlock the door to let you into whatever coins or tokens you have stored there. So that's really it. It was a lot of talking probably, but there is the summary, the different types of wallets. I will, as I said, do more videos getting deeper into what each of the wallets are. I probably went a little bit deeper there than I meant to, but hopefully it has been a good overview for you. You can go back and rewatch it as well. If you get some value from the video, give it a like. Also feel free to share it to help others start to understand what the different types of wallets are. And I will talk to you guys very soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.